Hello, beautiful creatures. How you guys all doing? I don't know why I ask. I know how you guys are doing. I know how you guys are doing, and uh, I'm very sorry and just want to let you know that I'm with you and you're not alone, and I love you and stay positive. It looks like Canada has some really big plans in store for us for the spring of 2021. Um, so if you guys thought that by January, we would be free and uh, partying with our friends and traveling the world and that kind of thing. I'm sorry to break it to you, but January's probably just gonna be the beginning of the end. We really haven't seen anything yet. I mean, of course, it doesn't have to go on to January. It doesn't have to go on to spring. It doesn't have to go on till tomorrow if we stop accepting this and uh, resist, take off our masks, stop doing all the stupid bullshit. It goes away now. I think a lot of people think that uh, they have no control over this situation, and uh, you do have control over the situation. And all you gotta do is nothing. Yeah, like Trey Kennedy says, do less, God bless. You just gotta do nothing, basically, to make this end. Anyway, um, back to Canada and their plans for the spring of 2021. If you visit the Government of Canada website, you can look this up yourself. You will find an order for riot control agents, uh, more specifically 36,000 units of tear gas to be delivered by the spring of 2021. So uh, I will link the document below so that you can have a look for yourself of um, a chemical agent and tear gas for the spring of 2021, which is pretty sketchy in itself, but wait, there's more. The following day after uh, they put out this order for the 36,000 units of chemical agents, they also put out a request for information regarding service providers for isolation camps. As you guys know, we already have isolation camps going in Toronto. We have them in Quebec. I believe there's isolation camps in Vancouver. Don't hold me to that, but I know that they are in Quebec. They've actually been forcing people in Quebec. If you don't know what's going on there, uh, Quebec has become a little baby Melbourne. Quebec is basically a little baby Melbourne. The way it works is, you know, you got the states, and then Canada is the state's brain-damaged little cousin, and then you got Quebec. That's almost like a whole separate entity, which is still America's brain-damaged little cousin, except they speak French. We are going through the same things that the States is going through. We're just a lot less noisy about it because Canadians are very docile and really do not know how to stand up for themselves. If you were to stab a Canadian in the throat, they would apologize to you for bleeding on your shirt. So back to this document. We have service providers for federal quarantine isolation camps. Let's read through this a little bit. Uh, request for information regarding service providers for federal quarantine isolation sites for the government of Canada. The government of Canada is considering engaging in a third party service provider for federal quarantine camps. So not only are they putting up these quarantine camps, they're looking for a third party service provider. Um, sounds a lot like private for profit prisons for dissidents. I don't know, am I wrong? Does it sound a lot like, you know, placing an order for 36,000 units of a chemical agent and then the following day uh, requesting information for I isolation camps. Sounds a lot like Nazi Germany. I'm not going to say it is Nazi Germany, but I don't I don't I don't know did they do anything different cuz it sounds pretty similar to me. Third-party service provider for federal quarantine isolation sites that will be used to house and care for people. Now this part is important. Sites that will be used to house and care for people for public health and other related federal requirements associated with COVID-19 pandemic response. Aside from public health, what other related federal requirements are associated with the response to the COVID-19 pandemic? What exactly does that mean? The government is seeking feedback from current service providers about potential options for standing up, operating, and managing all of the services associated with these sites. 
The purpose of this request for information is to seek feedback from potential service providers in order to develop a strategy for potential future management of these sites going forward. So um, Randy Hillier, he's, he's one of the few people that are actually standing up and fighting back for us. He was told, it, he was told to take a seat in Parliament when he pressed about the purpose and the intention behind these isolation camps. So I'm going to show you that clip now. Question, the member for Lana Frontenac Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. In my supplemental question yesterday, I asked this government if the people of Ontario should prepare for internment camps. In September, the federal government posted a call for expressions of interest for contractors to supply, provide, and manage quarantine isolation camps throughout every province and every territory in Canada. These quarantine isolation camps, however, are not limited to people with COVID, but provide a wide latitude for many people to be detained. Surely this government is aware of the intentions to build these isolation camps from coast to coast. And my question to the Premier is, how many of these camps will be built and how many people does this government expect to do? Question. Government House Leader. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is very true that when people leave the country and when they come back in, that the, uh, uh, the province is suggesting, and, uh, and the federal government, in cooperation with the federal go government, we are suggesting that people uh, isolate uh, themselves. That has been a, a practice that has been very successful, not only here in the province of Ontario, but across uh, uh, across Canada and we will of course be redoubling our efforts to make sure that uh, the people of the province of Ontario uh, remain safe Mr. S Mr. Speaker so if the member is referring to the fact that uh, uh, that one of the public health policies is that when you return from a jurisdiction outside of the province of Ontario or from another country that you isolate yourself for uh, for two weeks I would suggest uh, uh, that that has been a good uh, a good policy that has been working in fact this house has been doing the same thing since we came back we are working in cohorts to make sure that the Legislative Assembly can continue to operate. That's why we have two separate cohorts, uh, Mr. Speaker. Response. The cooperation of the official opposition. That is why all members of the independents have been excluded from that cohort, because we want them to be able to participate in debate. So we will continue to do everything in our power to make sure that this House continues, but that the people of the province of Ontario and Canada are kept safe. Supplementary question. Again, uh, back to the Premier. Here's the RFP. And in the RFP, it uses clear language to express that these camps can be used for a broad spectrum of people, not limited to travelers. Indeed, it doesn't even mention inter international travelers. It's just a broad latitude of people. And I'll send over the copy of the RFP after. So your government is, must be in negotiations, negotiations and aware of these plans to potentially detain and isolate citizens and residents of our country and our province. So, Speaker, to the Premier, where will these camps be built? How many people will be detained? And for what reasons, Questions. for what reasons can people be kept in these isolation camps? And I'd like to I'd like to have the Premier assure the people of Ontario. Member take a seat. The next question. It's pretty unbelievable. They're just completely deflecting. You know, this comes at a time when Quebec has gone into a full police state and I'm in Ontario. Ontario is always a couple of weeks behind. There have been UN troops spotted in Quebec. There have been UN troops spotted at their um, protests. I've heard, um, I've heard a lot of people talking about um, military, military being spotted all over the country. I'd actually really like, if anybody has more information, if anybody's seen anything, um, about these, about these UN troops that have been spotted, I'd really like more information because I'm just seeing, like, a few videos here and there. I don't know, we got a lot of crazy shit going on, um, actually in Quebec. They have also gotten to the point where they are 
are putting people in these isolation camps by force. It's terrible. It's terrible what's happening there. It's very similar to Melbourne. And we're next. We're next. I'm going to give it probably um, mid-October before all of this comes our way. So I would highly suggest, guys, um, emotionally prepare, okay? Don't go into a space where you're like ragey all the time because you are going to break down so quickly if you go into the rage place so try to take breaks from the internet if it would help i would suggest deleting facebook i deleted facebook on week two of this situation it's very low vibrational stuff it brings you down for the whole day i deleted facebook back in march because i could not handle the demonic energy on face i don't even know what facebook is Facebook is just um, middle-aged men and women just spewing hate onto a pl like I, I go onto that platform and I just feel I feel uh, embraced by hatred. That's all I feel on Facebook. So eh, I would get off of that. I know not all the other ones are much better, but you know people are a little bit more civil. People are a little bit more civil on the other ones. That one was just like destroying my soul on some other level. I felt possessed by the devil being on that platform. So I'm going to show you what's going on in Quebec with these, um, you know, forcing people into these isolation camps. So here's the article here. Quebec may detain citizens at COVID-19 isolation facility, public health authority says. This is from, when was this published? September 9th, so exactly one month ago. It has been reported that authorities in Quebec City, Canada, intend to isolate unruly citizens in a COVID-19 facility through the precise location, though the precise location is not known. So they're going to be detaining people in Quebec, unruly citizens, in a secret location. Whatever the fuck that means. Dr. Jacques Girard, leader of the Quebec City Public Health Authority, stated during press conference that a number of customers at a bar were ordered to wait for the results from their COVID-19 test, but decided to leave the premises before the results came back. This is what Girard claims to have led them to being taken and forcibly placed into isolation by the state. Sounds totally reasonable. We might isolate someone for 14 days, Gerard noted. And it is what we did this morning. Forced a person to cooperate with the investigation and police cooperation was exceptional. They always praise it. They always praise it, you know, because they want the police, they want anyone who has authority over the citizens to get a nice little, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. I'm sure Hitler told uh, the Gestapo that they were doing a good job every day. Gerard went on to say that if a person is told to stay in isolation, public health officials have the duty to go to their home and force the person to comply. And if they don't comply, the state is permitted to pick them up and force them to adhere to protocols. Gerard asked if these people were under watch, to which he answered in the affirmative. When pressed on where these people were being held, Gerard said, it is not at home. It depends on the person. Because we have had people isolated at home, and then we saw the person was not at home. So we went to their home and told them we are isolating you where we want you to be. I don't want to go into the angry space. I don't want to go into the angry space. Things look like they're going to heat up for next year. I'm pretty emotionally exhausted and starting to think about fleeing to Texas. Is there anyone in Texas that's willing to adopt me? Because I heard that's where it's at. I just want to, maybe I can join a group of like, like big burly bikers with guns who can protect me. Oh, um, also, I wanted to tell you guys that uh, a few of you over the past few weeks have asked me if there's any place where you can support me. So I took the step and I have a Patreon now. Um, yeah, I know it only took me two years, right? I do have a Patreon, so I will link that below. You know, I really love doing these videos and I really love doing the research for these videos and all that, but obviously I don't make any sort of income doing this whatsoever, so, you know, I can't be doing as much of it as I would like. So I will link that below uh, if you guys want to donate. Donate? Is that what you call it? If you guys want to donate, that would be great. If not, I still love you just the same. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please like and comment and subscribe, and I will see you all next week. Bye!